You hate ads, I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this channel ad free. Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence. I'm Mike and today we have a package from JetPens, which I have been waiting for for a little bit. I am psyched to get into here. Uh, there we go. Good. Get this out. Let's see, anything else in this package? Nope. Throw that over the shoulder. All right. Let's uh, get into this action. This came fairly quickly in the post before the JetPens, like, prediction of when it would get here, I believe. Take our invoice. There's that for us. Uh, and now, all kinds of thing. This is an interesting way to package these. All right, let's take this first. Um, oh, interesting. Did I order two of these? Oh, I accidentally ordered two of these. I actually didn't even know that. Huh. Well, this is a uh, Rikagaku Dustless Chalk White Pack of Six, and apparently I ordered two of them. Um, yeah, so 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 right there. I don't remember doing that, but that's all right. I mean, I hope it's good. If it's if I don't love it, I will pass it on to my colleagues. This is the other thing I got. Uh, which is sort of like a chark, uh, chalk pin situation. So as a philosophy instructor, sometimes I get classrooms that have whiteboards, which I massively prefer. Uh, and sometimes I get chalk or I get chalkboards in my classrooms, which I really don't like. But I did have some fancy Japanese chalk that they apparently like don't sell on jet pens anymore. And I think it's actually kind of hard to get. Is this a magnet? Do I have anything magnetic here? I don't think I have anything I can test this on. I think it's got a magnet on it. Oh, wait, here we go. Let's see. Yep, sure enough, that's a magnet. All right, well, cool. Uh, anyway, I had some fancy Japanese chalk that uh, apparently they don't sell anymore, and I lost the packaging for, so I don't remember the name. But uh, this is another fancy Japanese chalk. Uh, the manufacturer of this product, Japan uh, Rikagaku Industry, was established in 1937 on the belief that every human being needs to be loved, be useful, be praised, and be needed, which is great. And they employ a whole bunch of um, uh, like um, uh, people with disabilities and that sort of thing in their factory to make chalk and so this is kind of uh this is kind of a good story as well as what i expect will be a good product whoa <laughs> a good product whoa <laughs> i just shattered that so good job good job mike we'll see if this works anymore that just blasted this thing right out of here uh some chalk dust wow that is okay so uh, maybe if I sh maybe I should do this while this is on. <laughs> Even that's not a great idea. All right, so this is this is very spring loaded. Uh, I'll I'll you'll have links down in the description to uh, this stuff. But um, when uh, when doing this, be careful of the chalk because it is wildly projectile. Um, was was not expecting that. Maybe it said something about that here on the. On the packaging, but I don't know. So, um, yeah, don't push that button unless you mean it, because whoa, will that shoot chalk out? Fortunately, it turns out I have 12 more sticks of chalk. Um, also, these Japanese chalks tend to be, uh, tend to be, uh, let's see, um, they usually have like a coating. Let's see, this is a new chalk. New chalk addresses the problem of having a whole bunch of poof chalk dust go everywhere uh, with natural calcium carbonate composition made from scallop shells, which is very nice. Um, calcium carbonate lasts, tw lasts twice as long as chalk plaster, making it more economical. JetPens finds dust still gets on your fingers when using the chalk, but not as airborne as other standard chalk. So that's pretty cool. Um, it could be, it could be interesting. We'll see what this is like. I'll have to try, test it in a classroom because I don't like chalkboards and I don't have one at home, so I can't show you how it works, but, uh, but we'll see. This, I'm glad I did that on camera because, whoa. <laughs> All right, so be careful with the button on this. It is not messing around with that spring in there. Uh, by the way, these, these are not expensive. This is $3 for six pieces of chalk, which seems um, like 50 cents for a piece of chalk. Seems fine. And this chalk holder with a piece of chalk that is now absolutely broke uh, is uh, seven fifty for the whole situation, which is not bad. I did have, I do have a metal chalk, um, uh, chalk holder. What would you call this? I guess it's just a chalk holder, because a thing like this is like a lead holder. Um, but I have a metal one, but it's too small for the good chalk. Like, I don't know, really know what it's made for, but it doesn't fit any chalk that I had around. So, I, And that chalk was horrible in that holder, and I threw it right in the trash. You ever have like a piece of chalk, you draw on a chalkboard, and it just like grinds? Ugh, I hate that feeling. And so, uh, yeah, that's... Um, 
why I threw that right in the trash. So hopefully this will be way better. And I won't jettison the chalk across the room every time I try to use it. Which is what just happened. Next up, Le Shot, which uh, did get kind of uh, kind of smashed here in the post, unfortunately. I uh, did not did not survive without getting smashed in this envelope. I do kind of wish they had sent it in a box and not just a flat rate envelope, but like whatever. I'm not going to do anything with the box anyway. So this is a pen from Tools to Live By, which I have seen at um, the uh, the San Francisco pen show for sure. I want to say Straits Pens carries them, maybe somebody else as well. Tools to Live By has some interesting stuff, and this is a pen that I've actually had my eye on for a little while, and it keeps going out of stock. This is Le Chat. You can see I did a black and a white cat. If you know me, then you know I have black and white cats, uh, and black and white cats, and so, uh, in fact, we have three cats. Two of them are black and white, one of them is just black. So, uh, this is going to be kind of a Mr. Nose Cat uh, uh, pen. It has a little cat face on the nib. That's adorable. Looks like a little number five nib of some variety. I don't think it actually says anywhere here in the specifications where the nib is from. Uh, it does not, so that's totally fine. Uh, this was $48, so not the cheapest pen on the market, but not terrible. Comes with, uh, comes with a cartridge, no converter, but it can take a standard international converter, I believe. Um, yeah, it says you can. So that's cool. We will uh, throw a converter in this and try it out. The body of this is uh, brass. So it's got a little bit of weight to it. Does it post? Mm, not, not really. Like there's nothing to, nothing to keep it, nothing to keep it on, which I guess is okay because I don't want this to scratch the lacquer. But I mean, I'm a little disappointed that it doesn't post uh, for 50 bucks. How's it feel in the hand? It feels in the hand pretty good. I think this is going to be a perfectly okay writer. It feels, it feels fine. Actually, the nib feels like it's got a little bit of a, just a little bit of, a little bit of spring. Not much. A little bit of bounce to it. And these are all fine nibs. I don't think there even is another size of nib. I think it's just the one nib. And it says, La Shot. Um, how do I feel about this click? It's got an authoritative click, but it's all at once. Like, there's no there's no ramp to the click, which you kind of, like, get used to feeling a little something. That really just jams on there. Clip. Uh, clip is kind of cheap, honestly. I, I'm not super impressed with the clip. But it does seem like it's secure and it's not bending when I, it's coming back to form. So maybe it'll be okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is pretty, this is pretty okay. It's got a lot of weight. I wonder if this weight's in the cap. Most of the weight's in the cap. It is heavy as heck right in this area. The pen itself is not bad. When I post it, I wouldn't want to post this anyway. There's so much weight up here. That's a really strange amount of weight. Can I take this apart? No, it doesn't easily come apart. I don't see a screw in there, so it must come off somehow. I don't know. Maybe I'll mess with it um, when I do a review for it. But um, my quick review is I'm a little disappointed by the quality in this um, Tools to Live By pen. We'll see how it writes. I hope it writes well. The nib seems like it's pretty good. Like, it seems like it's pretty well aligned. So we'll see how that works. I'm not, I'm not I don't know, not loving the feel. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll see how it goes when I get to be using it. Yep, nothing else in here. It feels like kind of a nice recycled -y sort of paper for the, for the packaging, if that's the thing you care about. And you can get it in black if you like. Uh, but I went for the white one because it kind of reminds me of Mr. Nose, and I like that cat. Okay. The rest of the stuff is on here, which was affixed inside there. Uh, I like the way that they do this. It keeps everything kind of secure and together, especially if you have a bunch of little uh, like single pens. I didn't have that many singles in this particular order. So this uh, isn't a huge advantage, but it does keep those from rolling around. All right, fine. Just gonna just gonna cut this off rather than unwrap it all. Uh, for those of you who ask in the comments, it's a Spyderco Manix 2 with Maximet steel, and it is sharp as the Dickens. I have never sharpened that knife. I'm not even sure if I have the tools because Maximet is extremely hard. But I haven't needed to. I've had that knife for years now, and it has never needed to be sharpened. All right, so this is something that I got as a replacement for something I've had for a long time, which is the uh, P-U-O, this is Mormon P-U-O 
system, and this is a binder that I've had for quite a while. And what I do in 2019, <laughs> I started keeping track of this coffee that I get from my favorite coffee roaster, which is Black and White Coffee in uh, Wake Forest, North Carolina. Not a sponsor, but they make great coffee and they ship all over. So, you know, try it out. But these are all uh, like single origin, mostly direct trade, that kind of stuff. And so I like to keep track of the coffees that I really like. And so Audrey suggested that I put them in a little binder and this has worked really well for that, but it is entirely out of room. I can't really put any more in there. And I was out of pages anyway. So I went ahead and bought another one of these little binders and these are good little ring bound binders. They have a little clasp down here at the bottom that you undo. This swings out and you just put your pages in and snap it back in. And there you go. It's been very secure in my experience. I haven't had it fall apart or anything like that. My biggest problem with the light gray is that I keep losing the darn thing, even with the hot pink uh, rivets. I, I just keep losing this, and then I have a stack of uh, a stack of labels that stack up. And hopefully, I find it again in time to write um, like a little thing about it. So some of them. Anyway, this is one of my favorites currently. This is Dumuriso from Ethiopia. Uh, it's anaerobic, uh, floral, peach gummies, lychee, and red grape notes. This is a fantastic coffee. I love it. It's what I'm drinking currently. So I, I liked it so much I bought another immediately. So check these out. These are actually very inexpensive, these little Marmons. Uh, the binder itself is $4.90 and the uh, 50 sheet. Uh, this is graph. You can also get it in line. What did I get this last time? Yeah, this is lined last time. This time I went for graph because, like, I don't know, why not? I'm covering most of it with a label anyway. Uh, and it's a light graph, so it should be pretty good. And this is very good with all kinds of pens. I mean, I'm always using uh, fountain pens in here. Uh, you can see a little bit of, a little bit of show through, occasional little tiny bits of bleed, but that is pretty rare. You don't see it in most cases. Oh, so. Anyway, these are really good, and I like being able to add sheets to it. There are also a bunch of other kinds. You can get craft paper inserts. You got little half size ones if you want to like double up and have halves for some reason. Very flexible binder system. This. Puo from Mormon. So check that out over on the jet pens. This is the Jabun Techo Light, which is a new uh, planner that I, or at least a new to me planner. I hadn't heard of it before. It's the Light Mini for 2023. This is uh, one of the Jabun Techo line, and I really like the Jabun Techo line. I do have also a Hobonichi that I got, which is a cousin. It's a lot bigger than this. This is the light mini and the size. Yeah, this is mini B6 slim, which is, uh, I've never heard of that size. Oh, this feels nice. Oh, dang. I wasn't really ready for how good that feels. Do I have a little cover in here? No, it's just paper glued to the, just glued to the cover itself. So this was one that you don't, I don't seem to, I didn't find any, you know, fancy covers for, but this cover feels so good. It's kind of like, um, you know what it reminds me of a little bit is kind of like, I'm um, blanking on it, uh, Leuchtturm. Kind of like the soft Leuchtturm ones, but it's not padded. It's just kind of like a thick material. It's kind of a, um, I don't know, what is this called, do they say? It just says soft, flexible cover. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but it is really nice. Oh, it says uh, plastic, polyurethane. So it's a plastic cover. All right, so it'll be able to take some damage for sure. Then the inside of this paper, uh, are the on the inside this paper is 52 GSM Kukuyo thin which is a very nice paper I think it's at least comparable with Tomoe River it's not quite as thin not quite as coated but it does handle fountain pens and all that sort of thing very well so let's look at what we have in here real quick um, so here we have our sort of year at a glance with all the days uh, going this way months going this way calendar my dreams They've always got these kinds of like these weird little front pages, list of, uh, list of, list of. Maybe I should, I should use this for like listing pens and inks that I get during the year. Uh, this is probably a pen and ink log and then I'll keep track of it. All right, that's cool. Uh, then we have here December, January. Okay, good. So it's actually a December start, December 2022 start. I thought it was a January start, but does it say? Huh. Yeah, it says January start on the site, but it's actually a December start, at least for this bit. So on these, they front load all of the months. And then the next part is weekly uh, sections for each week of the year. And they give you two bookmarks here, which I think is great. So I like the way the Jaboon Techo does it where they front load the months because then the months and the weeks are kind of separate and I can tell which thing my bookmark is supposed to go to and I don't get as confused. 
Uh, but I, I like that a lot. And also if I'm looking at months and I'm like, all right, so I need to look at January and I need to uh, make some plans for December. I can just flip over one instead of going to a whole separate tab as in some other planners. And I kind of flipped over there I'm like, okay, there's the next month. So I can just like go to the next page, which I think is good. Um, the graph on here looks a little bit distracting to me at the moment. We'll have to see how that goes uh, during the year, but this will, I plan to sort of use this as the one that I will bring with me because it is real small. It is much thinner than my Hobonichi and uh, will take up way less room. So yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to this. Audrey found this and I'm glad she did. She's like, you should check this planner out. So I did. All right. Jaboon Techo Light in uh, Mini B6 Slim. I mean, that's a size I don't know, but it sounds cool. And then these two are pens that I had never seen before. I think I saw these on the, like, you know, new stuff page. These are Zig pens, and they are made to make, like, dots of various sizes. And also they have a, uh, like, a writing tip on the other side. So I got two that were kind of interesting. This one is, like, metallic blue. And then what did I end up with? Red, I think. Uh, does it even say on this one? I'm going to say it's probably red. Let me make sure. Yeah, right. There are a bunch of them with like different names and some of them were going out of stock while I was dithering about other things to add to my order. It's kind of what I do a lot of jet pens. I just have a running cart and at some point I just order it. So that's how that goes. Let's take these plastic bits off here. I decided to get a regular one and a metallic one just to see how they worked and uh, see which one I like. Part of the uh, appeal of this is that you can uh, write with the one side like it is, which is kind of like a fiber tip marker. This one's pretty thick. This is a 1.0. The other one is a five point, or a, a, a point, oh, nope, that's not the one. <laughs> this one's the 0.5. Oh, that's interesting. This is not a fiber tip, I don't think. No, it's like a direct, like a porous plastic one. Interesting, so they're actually very, they actually are very different. Maybe that's so they can move those, uh, move those particles. All right, so that's cool. So let's try this out real quick. This is, um, anything on here I can't show? Nope. This is a paper that I got from Gentleman Stationer, uh, his store. This is a weekly pad from WMSKolk.com, WMS and Co. That's a weekly pad. And so what this does is you can write with this side. Um, so like uh, I did, uh, I did this today, uh, and then, you know that kind of thing. And I can like go like this and check things off, or you can do dots, which is neat. And this is kind of the reason that I got this. So. Uh, if you don't want to check it off that way, you can go burp, and make yourself a dot or a small dot. Or I guess like a really broad, bloody line. That's pretty cool. Did it bleed through? A little bit on the super broad one and a little bit of the, the, the thicker ones as well. But not much. This paper's pretty good. I've only just started using this uh, pad. But uh, let's give us... Ooh. Burp. <laughs> you just kind of go sploot and it'll do that and then that's pretty nice that's kind of a I think that's gonna bleed through probably oh it didn't at all interesting so is it metallic yeah it totally is all right so these are cool I'm gonna like doing that because sometimes I like checking things off but on this it doesn't have little checkbox areas and so I can just do uh, I can just do this and it'll tell me that I finished it that's pretty neat. Kind of like bullet journaling, just doing the, the bloop. I think that'll be cool. So check these out. These are Zig clean color dot markers. Uh, metallic and this, this one's metallic, this one's not. It says keep horizontal, water-based pigment. Um, uh, that's it. <laughs> that's all it says on it. So yeah, that's pretty neat. Pretty neat. It marked really well on my nail too, actually. I rub that off. I can rub most of it off. Pretty good. All right, so there you go. There's my... There's my haul from Jet Pens this time. La Shot, a little bit of a disappointment, but maybe I'll like it more than I think it will, or than I think I will once I start using it. But um, this was this was kind of one of the big purchases, one of the things I'm looking to the most. So that's neat. All right, so go over to Jet Pens, let them know that I sent you Mike at Ink Dependence, uh, because that's really helpful to all of us uh, creators who are making things that might help you find a thing that will really fit into your life, uh, because it lets them know that that's where their stuff is being seen, and uh, you know maybe they help us out uh, in the future sometime. We can collaborate on something, that kind of stuff. So you know, there you go. So do that. Uh, hit that like button if you liked it. Smash the subscribe button. If you're not already, I mean, so go ahead and subscribe. You're already here. And, uh, you know, uh, until next time, you'll see me in another video coming up soon. Peace out.